Have you ever wondered why it is easy to learn certain things but very difficult to learn other things? What makes some things really hard and some things really easy to learn? So there are some scientific theories around this, namely the cognitive load theory by Sweller. This theory breaks down why certain things are too difficult to learn and what you can do about it. So in order to learn something, what you need is new information. And in cognitive load theory, this new information is called an element or elements. Now, if you have a cluster of elements, like a high level concept, basically, that is called a schema. So what is a schema in the practical sense? Well, this tree behind me, you have a schema for it. So at some point you learned that there's something called trees that have leaves, a trunk, for example, these trees outside there, they're also trees, but they're very different than this tree. And this tree in turn is different than this tree. As you can see, the leaves are different and they're like way longer and the color is different. And yet your brain is still able to understand that all these are trees, even though they differ a lot in size, color, how their leaves are and so on. So there's a really high variation in like all the kind of trees that exist and yet you're still able to apply this one schema to all the different trees. When you learn something new about this leaf for example, maybe how the energy gets into them or how photosynthesis works, your schema of the of, of like other trees that have this as a subschema also get updated. And so this is where we arrive at the memory. So first we talked about knowledge and now what does receive the knowledge? It's the brain and the separation is between the long-term memory and the short-term memory. So what are we talking about when we talk about the long-term memory? So the long-term memory contains all information that is really important to you. So this is also what makes it different to the short-term memory. The short-term memory just takes in every spontaneous thing, but there's a lot of unnecessary things, a lot of noise. And the goal is to filter out the unnecessary stuff so that it cannot go into the long-term memory. And this is what, it make, what makes it hard to learn things. Using schemas in your short-term memory is really difficult. It's really cognitively taxing and takes a lot of energy, a lot of cognitive energy. And using schemas in your long-term memory is really easy and effortlessly and automatic. If the short-term memory was easier to use, so if you could just learn e new things easily, then that would mean there would be a lot of chaos in the long-term memory because just every little thing would be added. If it would be easy to learn stuff, you would just have a whole lot of junk in your long-term memory and it would be really difficult to navigate the world. So how do you get a schema then into the long-term memory from the short-term memory where it's really difficult to use said schema? Getting the schema into the short-term memory it's called schema acquisition. Getting it into the long-term memory, where it's easy to use, it's called schema automation. And as the name suggests, you get there by repetition. So how then do we become good at things? Well, this is called transfer from novice to expert. You go from novice, who takes like a lot of brain power for every little thing, to an expert who effortlessly can use the schemas. You have a finite cognitive load in your short-term memory and this cognitive load should not be overloaded. So what does this cognitive load then consist of? Well, there's three subtypes. There's the intrinsic cognitive load, the extrinsic cognitive load and the germane cognitive load. And the key here is that these, the sum of these three loads should be below your cognitive load. And if it's above it, it will significantly impede your learning progress. So it, you, it's really important that it's uh, lower than your cognitive load, but it should also be uh, manageable. Like in a, re like it shouldn't be too easy either. So the first of these three types is the intrinsic cognitive load, and the intrinsic cognitive load is the intrinsic difficulty or complexity that something has that you want to learn, and it cannot really be changed. So then what is the trick to learning something really difficult where all the elements depend on each other, are interconnected and so 
need to be all learned at once. Well, the trick here is to learn the incorrect thing. So you learn a, um, you, you scaffold yourself by learning a contoured, twisted version of the, the schema, a wrong schema. You learn the wrong thing, but simplified and broken down thing. And then you automate that wrong schema. And so once you're really good at this wrong schema, it will be sort of easy to use. And then you can actually, this will then reduce the comp total complexity of the original schema since you've learned a subset of it uh, within the wrong schema. But what about the other cognitive loads, the extraneous and the germane cognitive load? Well, they stem from the presentation of the, and the medium of the teaching um, or, or the presentation of the learning activities and are the loads required from the user that can actually be changed. And so here's the interesting part. The germane load is the cognitive load used to ac actually learn stuff, like learn uh, schemas and, and that result in the positive things for learning from the user. And the extraneous load, it is the presentation style and learning activity and all that stuff, which actually doesn't result in schema acquisition and learning and all that good stuff. So you generally want to minimize the extraneous load. And here's the banger, guys. So this means in turn that germane load for a beginner, so some learning activity that might be very helpful in scheme acquisition for a beginner, might be actually extraneous for an expert. So if an expert wants to learn something, the same learning material for the novice might actually hinder their learning progress. So it might be extraneous, it might take like add unnecessary technical cognitive load and there, therefore reduce the cognitive load that they have. This means that you have to adjust your learning materials or your learning activity to the um, level of the user. And so another thing they found is that in classrooms or like just in general, the assumed cognitive load or capacity of the students is actually way lower than expected. So it's very common in classrooms or in the, in the traditional education system that the learning um, demands far exceed the cognitive load of the students. Another interesting thing is that in classrooms there often is classroom anxiety and so people are afraid or they, they're like a bit you know shy to say something and this also reduces the cognitive load people have. In general, fear is very bad for cognitive load. So now that we have talked about learning stuff, acquiring schemas and automating them into using them very easily, we've talked about how to get things into your brain essentially, how to learn stuff. The longer time goes on without repeating, doing repetition in something, the more stagnant or the more easily the, the brain will forget it. And so what you have to do is you have to do repetition in exponentially increasing increments. So this leads us to the conclusion that the reason why it's tough to learn things in general is that you have to battle the cognitive load in your short-term memory, which is the barrier to your long-term memory, where the mastery lies. That means you have to constantly keep things in your cognitive load. And if the things that you want to learn are too difficult, they are above your cognitive load, which makes it really hard to get them into your short-term memory, which makes it really hard to master them. And so some of these schemas that you want to learn, they consist of elements that you have to learn, and those elements they can be learned in isolation, which means that it's low on your cognitive load, and that makes it easy to automate them and to master them. But other things, the elements depend on each other, and so you need to learn them all at once, which is very tough on your cognitive load, and this is why you can sort of grind your teeth out on like really hard topics and it just takes a lot of energy to learn them. So next time you encounter something that's like really difficult to learn, try to like simplify it and don't feel bad about not being like smart enough or something to learn. It's um, like just very natural. Finally, it can also be that the way you're learning things, so the learning activities or the material or whatever, is not really a good fit and it's not really effective for um, learning things quickly because it doesn't the extraneous and germane loads they're not really adequate for your level 
to me, this all seems like the key here to learning things effectively is to optimize extraneous and germane load. So the learning style activity, like the way, however you learn. Originally, I, I was like always trying to optimize like how I learn because I find it quite difficult. But what I've been doing in the last couple of years is I've been working on my own Spanish learning website. So basically a, like a language learning app in which I try to use like all the optimal ways of learning. And the ways I do that is I go on Google Scholar and so on and I research all these scientific papers that are sort of the state of the art in how you learn stuff. And I take ideas from there and like implement them in my own app. So feel free to check this app out and see if it like fits your philosophy, if the learning style there fits your philosophy and give me feedback. I uh, would be hugely appreciated. So one example here is error correction, which is very interesting. It's about the role of making mistakes when you learn stuff. And my next video is going to be about that. So if you found this one helpful, then feel free to check that video out as well.